Well, how many of you think Paul was quite a man? How many of you have ever wondered why Paul was under so much persecution? Have you ever wondered that? Seems like Paul, next to Jesus, was the most persecuted man in the Bible. You know, every, he wasn't the only one who was martyred, of course. Uh, many of the, all of the disciples except John was martyred in some way or another. All kinds of different ways they were martyred. So anyone who chose to follow Jesus opened themselves up to persecution. Um, and, you know, John even was, you know, he was persecuted. He just didn't get killed. He, he was actually thrown in a vat of hot boiling oil, and he swam across to the other side, got out. You know, got out on the other side. God kept him. You know, have you ever wondered why God heals some, doesn't heal some? God delivers some, doesn't deliver some? God, have you ever wondered about that? Well, you'll know that better when you see Jesus face to face. <laughs> and you won't have to ask him, you'll just know. I get so tickled sometimes. I think, man, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask the Lord this, that. I thought, no, you ain't. <laughs> uh, you ain't going to ask him all that mess. You're going to be totally, you're going to be glorified in the first place. You're going to know what you need to know. And you're going to be so busy looking in the face of Jesus, you ain't going to care about all that junk that was so important back here. Because we're, we've got a great future. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I think it's going to be total peace. There ain't going to be no worries about why didn't you do this or that or the other. I, I just don't think there's going to be any of that. Because to be in, pre, in the presence of the Lord is going to be total peace. And so the Apostle Paul suffered tremendously. And of course we know by history, not by the Bible, but by history that the Apostle Paul was beheaded eventually for the gospel's sake. I think I've told you the story before, but maybe somebody didn't hear it. When they came to get Paul to take him to the guillotine to cut his head off, he asked only one request. He said, please do not, do not fasten my hands or anything. Do not put any shackles on me because I want to walk this path down the road to get my head removed from my shoulders without any hindrances or any bondages. And he walked and laid his head down just like Jesus laid down himself on the cross. Nobody killed Jesus, he gave his life. And Paul gave his life uh, to be taken and, and asked that no one just take it away from him or to force it because he wanted to freely give his life for the gospel's sake. Sometimes we feel so mistreated, don't we? You know, Brother, Brother Reaver says America's favorite pastime is self-pity. You know, pity parties. We have pity parties with ourselves and feel sorry for ourselves all the time. You just need to have a copy of Fox's Book of Martyrs laying on your coffee table. And anytime you start wanting to have a pity party, go read a little bit. <laughs> and then you may decide you got it pretty good in life. Paul was persecuted extensively throughout after, after accepting Christ. And you know the story of his conversion. And he has just repeated that before Agrippa and Festus and, and the, the leadership of the country there in Caesarea. He has just given the testimony of again. And, and you know, there's some testimonies that you can just hear over and over again and some that just like to tell them over and over again. And, and we should be excited to tell the good things of the Lord. I was thinking when we were singing that song Christina just sang about, he, he healed my pain. I thought, how many of us have a testimony of, of pain that has been healed? I've got, I've got testimony of pain that has been healed in my body and I know that God, how many of you, you could testify about miracles of pain being taken away out of your body. I'm telling you, isn't it amazing? We, we, and, and do you like to tell those stories? Do you like to tell those stories? Well, that's good because it, it, it inspires other people's faith. So we need to be quick to, to share the miracles of God and what he's done in your life and to be unashamed of it. You know, every time I go see a doctor, I testify. I testify. Sometimes, you know, they tell me, they told me the last time I went to see uh, Dr. Lyons in Shreveport, you have 20, we don't ever see people your age with 20-20 vision. I said, 
That's because I have a good God who's keeping his eye on me and he's kept me through all these years. And so, thank God I have good vision, but it's all about God. So no matter where you are, what's going on in your life, there is a place to give praise and honor to God. You know, I, I go to my doctors. I don't take any medicine except a little, one little old pill that's medicine. And they're amazed at that. You're as old as you are and you don't take this blah, 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 blah. No, I don't because of the goodness of God. And we share the goodness of God everywhere we go. The Apostle Paul was glad to share his testimony. And I'm going to read you just the end of it in verse number uh, 16 tonight in the 26th chapter of the book of Acts. It says, but rise and stand on your feet. This is what God, this is what Jesus told Paul. He said, but rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose. I had read through this last week, but I wanted to go back and because God just struck me with that word purpose. He said, I have appeared unto you for this purpose. Now I want you to, I'm going to do like Brother Lackey. I want you to look right up here, look right up here. <laughs> looky, looky, looky. That's what he used to say. I want you to understand that if God ever blesses you, it's always for a purpose. There's a purpose. And the purpose is always to further his kingdom. It's not to make you look good. God doesn't deliver, set free, heal, or any of those things just so you'll look good. Come on. I mean, I know some people, I won't look over here on this side of the church, and I will say, I know some people that just get a new car. And then they can't hardly come to church because they're so busy touring the roads and going here and going there, and you don't ever see them anymore because they just got blessed with a new car. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking on Mark and Lori because they got a new car. But they won't be doing that. <laughs> but Lori said no. Now, I didn't see his head go that way, but Lori said no. <laughs> and that's all that matters. If Lori said no, we, we got it. <laughs> but I have seen it like they, they, they drive an old rattle trap to hardly make it to the church house on Sunday and they're faithful as clockwork. And they pray, oh, I need a new vehicle. I need a decent vehicle. I need a vehicle, blah, blah, blah. And so the church prays and they get a decent vehicle and then they're gone. None of y'all do that, but I've seen that happen before over the years. And many other, many things. That's just an example. Sometimes when God blesses us, gives us healing so we're stronger to do the things that we need to do, we confuse it and think the purpose he did that for us was for us. God doesn't heal, set free, and deliver and cause us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might for us. Because everything God does is for the sake of his name and the sake of his kingdom. And if you don't understand that, sometimes it may keep us from getting the things we're asking from the Lord. One place it says you have not because you ask not and then it talks about the reason is because you can want to consume it upon your own lusts. You got, you got all kind of things you want to do and you ask for, you know, ask for these blessings of the Lord to come. And if the Lord blesses us, instead of using it for the sake of his kingdom and for the glorification of his name, we use it to glorify our own name and, and to, to fill our own life with pleasures and the things that we think that's why he gave it to us. But there's a purpose. If, if you're healthy, there's a purpose for you to be healthy and to do the things you need to do. Come on. Or if you're, you know, whatever it is in life that you're able to do, our focus should be to use that to glorify the Lord. Not to glorify ourselves, to make ourselves look good or to brag on ourselves, but to glorify the Lord with the blessings of the Lord. Because if you're blessed, it all came from the Lord. Your blessings came from the Lord. You know, sometimes I'm not mindful enough of that. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm just not mindful enough of that. I told my husband right before church, I said, man, I should have I given some money right there. I should have, and he said, 
He said, I thought about it before you went on that trip. I said, well, you should have said something to me because I just don't think. Anybody like me? Some of y'all, that's all you think about, some way you can give somebody something, but I, he does. And, and, and I want to give, and I don't mind giving sometimes, but it just never crosses my brain to do something until sometimes it's too late and then you can't do anything about it. Come on. So if I'm blessed financially, I ought to want to bless in the name of Jesus. I ought to want to bless somebody in the name of Jesus. Come on. I did think about leaving the housekeeper a tip. Aren't y'all proud of me? In the motel where I stayed up there, I left a note on it too. I just didn't leave the money. I left a note on it and told her that Jesus loved her and put the name of the church right there in that town so she'd know where to go to church if she'd go. So I did not remember to do that, but then I, I totally fell off the cliff doing some other things because I'm not mindful enough. If I have money in my wallet, guess why it's there? Because God gave it to me. Because God gave it to me. And I want to be open to the Holy Spirit to be a blessing if I've been blessed. Amen? So y'all pray for me. If you don't need to pray for you, pray for me. That I be more sensitive. I'm not stingy. I'm just not sensitive enough to be moved by the Holy Spirit and to do it, and I want to be. So if I have money in my wallet, the purpose of that money is not just to try to figure out another shopping trip for me, but it is to be using that to bless somebody if that's what I need to do. You understand? So with all my blessings. So Paul was blessed of God here. He was directly interfered with by Jesus Christ. Showed, he showed up in Paul's life. What an amazing thing. Has, has Jesus ever showed up in your life? Man, he showed up in my life. He showed up in my life in a powerful way. And I'm going to tell you what, he didn't just do that so I could just keep silent about it and sit in the corner and not tell anybody. He, he set, showed up in my life and gave me the revelation of grace so that I could share it with everybody I come in contact with. And by the grace of God, now I don't forget to do that. Because that is so deep in my soul that it's got to come out. But I want you to understand that whatever God has given you, he gave it to you for his purpose. Have y'all got that? For his purpose. So think about all your possessions and all your blessings, your physical blessings, and, and say, Lord, how do I need to use that for the glory of your kingdom rather than just worrying about me? Amen? I don't know about you, but I need his help with that. He says, for the purpose, and the purpose that, that Paul was called was to make you a minister and a witness both of these things which you have seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you. Paul, Paul, he's saying to Paul, I, I've done this for you. I've given you this great appearance of Jesus and the deliverance that I gave you so that you can be a minister and a witness of these things that are happening to you right now but I want you to live in expectation because he said I am there are going to be other things he, he says which I will appear unto you I'm going to give you more the future says I'm going to give you more and so Jesus gave Paul the promise this is just the beginning the, the revelation of Christ to you and the steps he takes you to, to, to walk you through this life is always never the end of it all. The end will come when we see him face to face, however we see him face to face. We, some may go in the rapture, some may go by the grave, but however we go after this life, we will see him face to face. And when we see him face to face, all the revelation will be over, will be full and finished. We'll know then. But now we're in the process, ongoing process of new understandings. It doesn't mean there are new revelations in the sense of something that's not in the Bible, that's over. But I don't know about you, but there's so many things in the Word of God that God can reveal to us and bring it to revelation, not just head knowledge. 
And that's why he keeps his hand on us. He, he uses us. He touches us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is to keep on giving us the revelation of all the great things he wants us to minister. He doesn't even teach you something out of the scripture just for you. He teaches you things out of his word because he's setting you up to be able to help somebody else down the road. That's why he blesses you. Thank God for his blessings. Don't thank him. Just, don't just thank him. Use them. Don't just thank him. Use them. Come on. You know, if I gave you, a, and don't, I'm, don't hold your breath, but if I gave you a brand new house, you know, just saying thank you wouldn't be enough. Would it? You'd want to move in. You want to start putting it to use if you got something given to you. Amen? I wish I, I, wish I could, but I just don't have it. So he says to Paul, this is why I'm calling you. He says, delivering you from the people. He says, I'm going to, this is Paul's assurance. I'm going to keep on delivering you from the people. He's talking about the Jews and from the Gentiles unto whom I send you now. So he's saying, Paul, don't be afraid to go. Isn't that neat? How Jesus spoke to him right up front. Don't be afraid to go. Don't be afraid to share Jesus. Don't be afraid to witness. Don't be afraid to testify. Because I'm going to tell you, you're never alone. You're not by yourself. And you have the guardian angels around you all the time. And the presence of the Holy Spirit that will lead you and guide you and keep you from harm. So he's saying, don't worry about it, Paul. I'm going to deliver you. And he says, but I'm going to send you to open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. That's our, that's, that we also have that commission. When we see people in darkness, we need to point them toward the light. You know, that's what we are. We're road markers. We're, we're road markers. Everybody's on the road. And there's a broad road that leads to hell. And there's a narrow road that leads to heaven. And we're road markers. Come on, we're road markers. And we're standing at that place in many people's lives. And instead of just standing there watching them while they go down that wide road, we should be busy. You know, I heard the story years ago of a man that went across a bridge and realized that it was shaking under his car. He realized that there was insecurity on that bridge. And it, but he managed to get across. And he pulled over and parked his car and he grabbed some kind of a rag or something he had and he went and stood by the road and began to flag people down, flagging everybody down, don't, you know, yelling at the top of his voice, the bridge is out, the bridge is out. I don't remember, but 12 or 15 cars ignored him and went and their cars crashed into the river. Finally, somebody stopped. And you know what? That's the way it is. When we're out there waving, we're saying, this is the broad road. It leads to destruction. Don't go this way. Come this way to the narrow path. It doesn't look so good, but it's the best. Most people are gonna ignore. Just like driving, y'all drive home tonight, you're gonna ignore some signs. <laughs> Come on. You want to ignore those signs that say 55 miles an hour and stuff like that. I know how it is. And there may come along one to remind you of that down the road somewhere. If he reminds you he won't be so nice as just to tell you about it, he'll just hand you that little piece of paper. But what I want you to know is that people will ignore your road sign, but you've got to be one anyway. In fact, they probably don't even like the road sign. They don't even like it. Just like we don't like the speed limits and the, you know, all those things that, that we don't like. Don't like to wear a helmet. Don't like that law. Come on, there are things uh, that, that people are gonna look at you if you decide, I'm going to do all I can. He says, I am called you to open their eyes. 
and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. What, how, how more clear could it be? There's only two sides, from Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. He's saying, it's simple, folks. People say, I don't know how to win souls. Oh, you don't have to know how. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Do you know how that happened to you? Then you can tell somebody how to know Jesus. You don't have to have a Romans road or a special, you don't even, most people, if they're ready to hear the gospel, don't even need you to show them it in the Bible necessarily. Your testimony and the Holy Spirit living in you will come across to them and will help them to start having a hunger. And you know, the Bible says they're not going to come to Christ anyway unless the Spirit draws them. And only God knows the one who the Spirit's been drawing. And if we'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and God brings us across their path, they will be ripe to understand that they're in darkness and they need the light that we have to offer. So you may witness to somebody who's not open because the Holy Spirit hasn't drawn them yet, but you can still plant the seed and later on when the Holy Spirit begins to deal with them, they will recall those things that you said. So we must be about the Father's business. He's given me breath. We sing that song, it's your breath in my lungs that I praise God with. It's his breath in my lungs that keeps me alive every day. Come on. It's his breath. Instead of bemoaning the fact of what I can't do, let us look anxiously to those things that we can do to be able to be a blessing that I have breath, I can speak, and I can take the time to share Jesus with somebody the Holy Spirit puts in my way. So Paul says, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So Paul says, I listened to what God says and I obeyed. That's what's required of us, church. Obedience is not an option. Obedience is not based on what's popular. Just because the rest of the world is saying that same-sex marriage is to be accepted, the Bible says it's not. So we choose what the truth is. We choose to obey. Just because the Bible teaches that you can, you know, you, uh, you, by, by, by and large, the whole world in America these days thinks it's okay for people to live together and be sexually uh, involved with each other when they don't, aren't married. That's, that's the going thing. Everybody, gets, everybody moves in <laughs> before they are married these days. I say everybody, that's not a good word. But a huge number of people these days, young people, just think that's the way to live. You just go live with each other. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter. It's still a sin. No matter how the overwhelming force in this world goes against this word, as children of God, we gotta live this word. If I'm the only one in the world that believes it's long to co wrong or sin to cohabitate and not be married, I still got to stand up and say it's a sin. If I'm the only one left in the world that believes that. Do you understand? You know, and, and there are many, many other things the scripture says plainly. And if I'm not doing them, I got to confess I'm not doing them and ask God to change me to line up with doing them. And he will. If we'll submit ourselves to say, Lord, I'm not loving everybody. 
but you told me to. So therefore, I'm wrong, and your word is right. Forgive me and change my heart so I love everybody. So whatever it is that I'm doing that does not line up with this Bible, and you think I'm hammering this horse, I sure am, because today in the world we're living in, even in churches, they make excuses for sins. If it was a sin in 1950, it's a sin in 2022. If it was a sin in, you know, 1640, it's a sin in 2022, and it will be a sin forever because God never changes his mind about sin. So I just got to go and say I'm wrong. If I don't line up with this book, I got to say I'm wrong. Forgive me for being wrong. Forgive me for sinning. Let's call it what it is. It's not failure. It's a sin. Sin is sin. God, I'm sinning and I'm wrong. Forgive me. Change my heart. Give me the power to cut off relationships or whatever's needed so that I can bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Some things just don't bring glory and honor to Jesus even if they're not directly sins. And if they don't bring glory and honor to his name, you need to get out of it. Get out of it. If there's any possible shame connected that brings shame to Jesus, you need to walk as far away from it as you can, not as close to the cliff as you can keep from falling off. Because your name is important when it's associated with Jesus. When people see you compromising things, they lose, they lose confidence in you. They lose confidence in, you, in your message and in yourself. It takes a long time to get that confidence back. So don't lose it in the first place. Yield your heart to Jesus and let him change things that are wrong. I don't want any of you to be harmed by my ministry because I compromise the truth. I want to be an example to you of righteousness. If I fail, I want to come and say I was wrong. That's a godly thing to say I was wrong, I failed. That's what you owe to the people of God when you fail. Amen? Because we want to lift up his great name. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Amen? i got to shut up. So, I have not been disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for your attention tonight.